Welcome to section 6.6, uh, solving quadratic equations using the zero factor property. Um, you may have been wondering why we just went through and learned all these different types of factoring. It's all leading up to this section here where we learn how to solve equations. Now, in general, up until now, we have not worked any equation that had a square in it. A quadratic equation has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, okay, where a is not equal to zero. Now, all that means is that you have to have a square term in there in order for it to be a quadratic, okay? Most of the problems we're going to be working, we're not going to have a number in front of our x squared. The only time we know how to work one of those is if we have a GCF or if we have one of our special um, forms. So if we have a difference of squares or we have a perfect square trinomial, okay? A, B, and C are just numbers, and I'm not sure why that capitalized there. Just auto-correct, okay? Notice that this thing is equal to zero. That becomes important, okay? So zero factor property. This is something you know, but you may not have thought about in this way. This says if a times b equals zero, then either a is zero or b is zero. This is saying you're multiplying two things together and you get zero as your answer. If you think about it, the only way that can happen is if you're multiplying by a zero. We don't get zero as an answer any other way, okay? So our steps for solving a quadratic, we have to get a zero on one side. We may have to multiply things out, we may have to do a lot of rearranging, but we have to make that happen. Then we factor each side completely. This is probably the most difficult step. This is all of the stuff we've been doing in this chapter up until now. Then we set each individual factor equal to zero and then solve each little equation. And then we should get two answers, okay? All right, so one thing we want to look for, we, we need an equal to zero, or we cannot solve this. Now, every other problem we've had in this chapter, we have not had an equal sign. You've been given something and told to factor it. If you don't start off with an equal sign, you're not going to get y equals a number. You're not going to get m equals to a number. You're just factoring and you stop. We only go these further steps when we have an equal sign in our original problem. Okay. So let's look at this first problem. Get zero on a side. They've already done that for us. Okay, factor each side completely. They've done a factoring for us. Let's check to make sure it's done completely. Do I have a GCF here? No. Do I have a GCF here? No. These are both first powers on our M's, so this is as factored as possible. Okay, so they've done steps one and two for us. Step three and four set each individual factor equal to zero. What this means is you're gonna take this part and set it equal to zero, and that's gonna give me my answer or my other answer will come from setting this one equal to zero, okay? Now what we have here is we have two things multiplied together and we said that the only way that can happen is if at least one of them is zero. So now we have two little simple equations to solve. I need to move the seven over here. So let's add seven to both sides. We get two M equal to seven. Divide both sides by a two. And one of my answers is seven halves. Okay, for this one, Move this over to here by adding three to both sides. And we get m equal to three. When this is saying, check the largest exponent that you have on x, this should be the number of answers you get to the equation. It is possible that you get the same answer more than once and we count those individually. Now, when I say the largest exponent, that means if this were multiplied out. And if you think about multiplying this, doing the distribution, you're gonna have m times m, which is gonna give you m squared. So that tells me I should get two answers. When we get more than one answer, you should write your answer in set notation. 
you just take each answer and you put it in the little squiggly braces. Okay, they don't have to be pretty, but they should be there. 